Season 9 of Sea of Thieves is here and I've already completed the season's plunder pass, reaching renowned level 100 in just over 10 hours. Grab a seat by the fire and relax as I weave a tale of excitement, intrigue, and suspense in my first day back on the seas in Season 9. Waking up in the tavern like always, I made my way down the dock at Sanctuary Outpost. After purchasing some captaincy supplies from the shipwright, I saw that right next door, over at Smuggler's Bay, was the newly returned Ghost Fleet event. Grabbing a few more supplies from the merchant, I quickly dropped them off on the deck of my ship, raised an Order of Souls emissary flag, and made my way over. The servers had just come back online after being down for the patch, so I knew that this was my best opportunity to complete a world event before anyone else had the chance to interfere. Or at least, that's what I thought. I know that Rare said that all world events would be adjusted in difficulty based on the number of ships and crew near the event, but knowing that I was the only one around, it sure didn't feel like it. At least, not for this one. Ghost fleets have always been in my eyes a mixture of excitement and agony, depending on whether you've been able to keep yourself clear of too much enemy fire. In addition, fleets are a bit slower compared to other world events since it feels like sometimes you've got to play catch up with the wave when it's sailing in the opposite direction. That being said, it wasn't very long until I saw another player ship approaching. It was another sloop, so I knew it was either going to be a solo or duo crew, so I didn't feel the need to back off right away. And when they got a little too close for comfort, I decided to lob a few cannonballs their way for good measure. I knew they weren't going to hit, but they did accomplish the objective, which was to send the opposing sloop into the loving embrace of the Ghost Fleet. And maybe the Ghost Fleet got lucky with a one ball, because after a few minutes of watching the two duke it out, the player sloop was down for the count. But that just allowed time for two more sloops to catch up from their spawn locations to the world event. And I decided that since my goal was to try and level my renown as fast as possible, I wouldn't waste much more time PvPing. Instead, when an alliance flag was offered, I took the opportunity, and when the fleet was cleared, I immediately left the vicinity, lest there be a quick betrayal in the works. The next event available was the prize, the first Fort of Fortune on the server. I knew I had a head start from the other two sloops since we were still alliance, but I didn't know if there would be any other contenders, so I made my way there as fast as possible. And here is where I first felt the impact of Season 9's world event changes. Forts of Fortune were a slog to try and do solo, or even as a duo. Wave after wave of skeletons, skeleton captains, all three skeleton lords, and the Ashen Lord at the end, all to serve up punishment. But this was relatively calm by comparison. Smaller waves, ammo, and an armory available on the island? This was great! And then the second sloop showed up. One of the ones in the Alliance. I thought for sure this was the moment where we'd have to fight it out. But surprisingly, no. In voice comms, the Alliance member said he just wanted to finish the fort to get the credit for it and take the legendary kegs of black powder for his commendation hunt. I was still a bit suspicious, especially considering the new chest of fortune and corresponding commendation, but I was willing to give it a shot. And you know what? It worked out. We worked together to defeat the waves and the Ashen Lord was quick and painless. Okay, for sure this is where the betrayal happens, right? No. We unlocked the fort and the Alliance member went in for the kegs. And I know what you're thinking. Do it, John. Explode the kegs on his ship. Eliminate your rival. Betray the world before it betrays you. Nah, I'm good. He left with his kegs and I was left with the rest of the fort loot, including both the chest of fortune and Chest of Legends, as well as the rest of the treasure. The most time-consuming part was moving the loot to a suitable harpoon location, but after that, it was easy. And I personally love the new harpoon mechanics here. Just point and shoot to get the loot on board with no delay. I know that there are some players who don't like the change because it decreases teamwork in their eyes, but as a primarily solo player, it's a godsend to me personally. After a quick battle with a skeleton sloop, I decided to make a turn in over at Dagger Tooth Outpost. First, I wanted to make sure I got credit for a chest of fortune sale, so off to the gold hoarders I went. And since I was flying an Order of Souls emissary, I only sold Order of Souls loot and kept the rest on board the ship. After selling all that, I went and put up a merchant emissary and grabbed a lost ship and voyage to do next. What was interesting to me here was that this was possibly the shortest lost ship and voyage I had ever done. When I got to the first debris pile, I was surprised to find so much treasure the captain's key, and a note saying that the shipwreck was the next destination back near Sanctuary Outpost. With my alliance now done, I was a little paranoid about leaving my ship behind while I grabbed loot, 
but a steady supply of food allowed me to grab all the treasure in the captain's quarters, the manifest, and make my way over to Sovereign's for another turn-in, this time with all the merchant loot. After this, I swapped emissaries once again, and this time focused on gold orders. We were attacked by another skeleton sloop after leaving port, and trust me, I'm not complaining. Skeleton sloops are easy pickings, have usually decent loot, and can raise an emissary level quickly. Dug up a few things at Crescent Nile, got attacked by another skeleton sloop, seeing a trend here yet, and managed to get a grade 5 emissary. Another turn in at Sovereigns, this time at Golden Sands, and it was time to raise an Athena emissary and start a Legend of the Veil vale quest. We already had a bunch of Athena loot from the Ford of Fortune that I hadn't turned in yet, but I wanted more. And turns out, so did someone else, as I spied someone else's Veil vale tornado in the distance. I sailed in for a closer look, and it turned out that another sloop, someone who hadn't been part of the original Sloop Alliance, had started this quest. Once again, we had a decision to make. Do we attack the sloop and try to steal the veil for ourselves? Or do we help the player out? Decisions, decisions. In the end, I offered an alliance and we managed to take down the veil with little difficulty. It turned out the new alliance member only wanted to grab the small Athena trinkets again for commendations and would leave all the ghost loot and the chest of legends to yours truly. In fact, we parted up once again and took on my own Veil vale Tornado successfully, where he didn't want any loot at all and even gave me the supplies from his ship before he logged for the day. Our day would continue as we encountered both Megalodons and more skeleton ships on the seas. Personally, I love the fact that the seas feel more active with these encounters. Megs have been pretty sparse lately since shrines and sea forts were added into the game, so kudos to Rare for being able to work them back in mechanics-wise. Now if only I could nab that shrouded ghost. After those encounters, it was time for one last ghost fleet, and this one was pretty weird, as a brig that was carrying the Reaper's Bounty chest had zoomed into the event and planted itself right on the island where it shortly thereafter sunk. Wasn't quite sure what to make of that, but I'm glad I caught it in the recording because I don't think anyone else would believe me otherwise. A final turn in, and there you have it, Renown level 100. I know that some players are disappointed that Season 9 didn't really have anything big added to the game, on the level of, say, a sequel to a Pirate's Life Tall Tales. But as far as quality of life improvements go, they get 5 stars from me. Everything mechanically felt faster, which when the game itself is slower paced than your average first person shooter or adventure game, getting back some of the extra time is critical in improving the relationship between the player base and the game. That's not to say that everything is perfect. I think there are still a few areas of opportunity for it, including, yes, an anti-cheat system, but all in all, I do believe that the game is moving in the right direction. And I want to give a special kudos to the pirates I met in-game during this video. You're part of what makes the game special. Now, I'm moving off to the next adventure. Thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time, this is John Bardcore signing off, saying so long, and take care.